Hey guys, welcome back. Sports with Mono and Mono. It's April 16th, 2019. Steve. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Yeah. So there's there's a bunch of stuff going on. So um, obviously, I guess the big story is the Masters, right? I mean, Tiger Woods, you know, is it the greatest sports story of all time? I, I don't know. I mean... I mean, time? I think it's awesome. I mean, I think it's I think it's great and so forth. Um, I didn't see it coming. I, what did I take? I had um, Johnson and Fowler, but both of them made a run at the end. They but, played well. I, I picked Justin Rose and uh, altered that to uh, Rory McIlroy. McIlroy did okay. Nothing. They were really never in contention. Justin Rose yeah. had a tough start, never recovered. Yeah. But I thought it was perfect conditions for, I guess, the first three rounds. I'm sure it was. The scoring, they were all bunched up. All the big guns were right in contention. Uh, I thought that was uh, noteworthy. And I mean, really, at any point, somebody could have won that. But Tiger hung around. And I don't think Tiger was um, overly aggressive. I think he was patient. And I think he just, uh, that intimida intimidation factor really kicks in uh, on... Uh, the last round and listen weather played a part of it that you got to bunch up uh, the three guys on Sunday and move the uh, tournament up until the morning I don't think that really uh, affected anything other than again you got a gallery with Finau and, and Molinari um, and everybody's rooting for Tiger so don't tell me there wasn't added pressure put on those boys well I, I listen I and I agree with that there's no no question about that I I you know, there's no question that Tiger Woods earned it. He earned it, no question about it. You know, great comeback, of course, 43 years old. He looks 20 years younger than when Jack Nicholas had won it at 46. Oh, it's, obviously, it's the training and the health and all kinds of stuff. But, um, you know, when I, when I saw it and it, it was coming down to it, I said... Molinari doesn't make mistakes. I, I, I was texting somebody back and forth, and he made a mistake. Um, I, I know it hit the branch and so forth, but that went into the water. A couple of guys followed and so forth. But And the wind plan factored in. The wind, I heard an interview with Tony Finau, and he said basically by the 10th hole, the wind was starting to go. And on the 12th hole, listen, he, the Woods was the only one who landed it on the grass. And, um, yeah. but again, I mean, he's played that course. It's, it's like it's in his backyard. Yeah. And uh, that really was the turning point on that 12th hole. Um, I mean, from a, from a sports war. story, it is, it is kind of miraculous that this guy made this kind of comeback and so forth from, from back surgery and all that. You know, he's had a lot of personal issues and so forth. But look, you know, like you you brought up, we you know neither one of us I don't think mentioned guys like Kopka, but these guys are back when when it comes to major time, these guys are back. So, but okay. now look, okay, so he wins the Masters right now. He's the favorite at the PGA, which they moved to next month. They moved to in front of the U.S. Open, which is new. Yeah. But these are courses, you know, both that and and the Open, uh, the PGA and the Open. He's won there before, so I mean, if he's if he's got that drive in him, it's I'm not saying he's walking away with it, but I think he earned the right to be the favorite. Listen, I think a lot of lot of Americans were rooting for Tiger, obviously. So what I took away of this victory, it's great for golf because the ratings are through the roof. I'm sure uh, he's good for golf. He's good for the game. Yep. Um, to your point on the PGA being moved up. Listen, it's at Beth Page, which is a big course. Oh. So I'm gonna go with like a Dustin Johnson and Kepka and uh, guys with you know Tony Finau, a guy can hit the ball 320 yards. Well, but we, we you can't discount it. Tiger Woods, and now he's at 15 majors. And I'm personally, I want Jack <laughs> to keep to, the record. To keep the record. I think uh, people that know the Monahan brothers uh, were Jack guys. Uh, but that doesn't diminish what, what Woods is doing. It, it's a great feat. I mean, Jack even, I think, says he's the greatest golfer he, he's seen. And 
obviously it's undisputed from what we've seen for him coming on the scene at such a young age. Yeah. His resume is impeccable. And uh, it's just been, it was a great tournament, though. It was the Masters that's not disappoint. Love it. Ever. I could sit there for eight hours a day and watch every golfer go through there. So. And now, you know, the fact that he's in it and, and has the potential, right? The PGA is always kind of the, the red-headed stepchild of the majors, right? But now they moved it up, so now that's going to get ratings like the Open oh, sure. is going to get. And, and, and to my point and about US Tiger Open. winning the Masters, it's going to be record ratings. Yep. I mean, it's great for golf. And, yep. um, is he going to get to Jack? I can't dispute anything that this guy does. I can't question it anymore. It's all about health with him. So he's on, he's back, Tiger's back, and uh, it was a great tournament. So we have to shout out to, to Woods. Congratulations. And I think he's, I think he's one behind Sling and Sammy Sneed for all-time tour wins, actually. Yeah, he's approaching that. That's. Uh, I think he's one behind or two behind, maybe. That's got to be in the 80s, I think, yeah. Or, right? Yeah. High 80s, something yeah. along those lines. I think Sam had 80, you know, or... In, or 81, and Tiger's got 79 or 80, so yeah. it's very good. But the other thing, too, is, is uh, they showed a picture of Francesco Molinari in 2007 caddying for his brother. I don't know if you saw that. His brother won the U.S. Amateur uh, title in 07 for the United States, and Francesco was his, his caddy, so there's a great picture, people can look it up, of Tiger uh, shaking... Molinari's hand wearing the white jumpsuit, the white master's jumpsuit. So, isn't that... Wow. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I, right? I don't know where 12, I was. Twelve know. years later that, you know, Francesco's battling Tiger for the master's title. Wow. And he's a great kid. I'm, a, I'm oh. become a huge fan of him now. Big time after his writer couple of Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a, on the bandwagon for him. He, he, Me too. He's a Class great size. demeanor and, uh, yeah. and I felt bad for him. Played great. Listen, he'll be he'll be in the mix going forward. But he's a, a major winner, so Absolutely. he's you know, a Ryder Cup legend as far as we're concerned now. So yeah. oh, it was great. You're right. It's it's so good for golf. Yeah. And the PGA at, at Beth Page, which is a bear of a course. I mean, right. But yeah. Tigers won there before, so let's see how that pans out. Yep. Right. So let's move on. Like, like, what else is going on? Obviously, the NHL. Oh right? yeah, we got to talk about that. Some cool, cool stuff, right? The Islanders up three nothing, which and is a surprise. What does that say about Barry Trotz, though? And, and Lou he, Lamorello putting this team together. Exactly. Listen. We we've talked about this before. Lamorello, best GM. I I I, I could. Recall. I think he's the best GM in maybe all four sports over the last 30 years or so. Amazing. Yeah. What he did with the Devils and now doing with the Islanders. And I guess he, he, he must have went after Trot. You know? I and, mean, and the Islanders, you know, not that it, I just said it's kind of a surprise. I, I think it's a surprise they're up 3 0. I'm not surprised that they can knock off Pittsburgh, but they're dominating them. Sid the Kid, I don't even believe, has a point the whole series. Shut out. And they Three are games. taking it to them uh, big time. They go, they play again tonight. I really, you know, obviously they're in the catbird seat up 3-0, and if they can knock them off tonight, they get some rest and, and wait for the, uh, the Washington Carolina uh, winner, most likely. Yeah. And that's a, you know, Carolina snatched a victory last night, but I got to see Washington. Is so most that's why 2 1 on. now? That's 2 one. 1. Yeah. But I'll be stunned if Carolina comes back. I agree. But also, let's also talk about Columbus and, and Tampa Bay. I, I've been touting Tampa Bay for the past month. I didn't think they could be <laughs> beat. I mean,. President's Trophy and you know record record number of victories in a season and they're just getting schooled. They are getting schooled by their ex coach John Tortorella Torts, who I am a big big fan of, always have been. Me too. But they're really sticking it to them. They're they deserve to be up three yep. nothing. Um, they came back. Uh, what was that game one? I think Tampa was up. Columbus comes right back, and they've been carrying the momentum. So. Listen, yeah, that it, that's a shocker series right there. That's, it has been done before, coming back from three L, but boy, are they really in a hole? And, I think it's been done like three times. And, that's that, that that doesn't bode well for either Pittsburgh. No, or, I, I I would <laughs> I would take, take some house money that they're going to finish off the Lightning and 
I don't know. I, I'm kind of stunned, to be honest. It's, Me too. They're such a good team, but uh, Columbus, you got to tip the hat to them. They're playing hard, so yep. we'll, we'll see what happens on that front. Oh, and I'm looking forward to it. I mean, that would be Islanders, Caps would be a great, great uh, series. Uh, you know? And the last time, I mean, that I remember of the significant capital Islanders was Pat LaFontaine scoring, what, that triple overtime? Quadruple overtime, I might think? Have had, might have gone in the fourth <laughs> overtime and ended at, what, like 2 in the morning? 2.30 or in the morning, I think. But yeah. that's, you know, that's how far back it's been that the Islanders have been relevant. But I'm telling you, they're back. They got a great foundation, and like we just talked about, a great management, great coaching. Yep. And uh, I'm looking forward to... Uh, more hockey, and listen. I, there's something I need. I wanted to bring up because I was in the in the Washington Cap series. I mean, obviously, Ovechkin. Yeah, he's the marquee guy in the league right now, right? Of course. He gave a beating to some guy <laughs> last night. I mean, and you don't expect that from him. He's a goal scorer, but he took it to this guy like like. Buster Douglas took down Tyson. Okay. The guy's out. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the highlights. I but... believe he's in concussion oh. protocol. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't know he had that kind of power behind him, but well, now you know. So does the rest of the league. Absolutely. I mean, you want to take a shot at him, you're going to pay the price. Yeah, but also it's been a chippy uh, first round, too. I mean, there's been some suspensions doled out. Toronto and uh, Boston. Is oh, that, God, they hate each they other. They hate I, I love that series, too. <laughs> that, that's a good series, too. Uh, Tampa with uh, Kucherov uh, got suspended for cheap shotting a guy. Yeah. Um, Joe Thornton from uh, San Jose got suspended. Yeah. So listen, these guys, it, it's hockey playoffs, and uh, I'm actually kind of glad that they're, you know, being physical again because that's what we grew up on. Yeah. And uh, and we always kind of grown accustomed to there being no scraps in the NHL. I mean, first round, yes. Second yeah, yeah. round and third round, not much. Right. But that that Ovechkin thing. <laughs> what if you haven't out seen there? it, look it up. Yeah, YouTube it. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that so, was great. Yeah, so we'll cover the uh, the NHL playoffs yep. and uh, we'll we'll go from there. Yeah, so. all the other series are kind of neck and neck. Two yeah, one. Nashville's you know. winning their series. Calgary, um, Colorado. Avalanche, yeah, so we'll see who survives the West. But I can tell you, this East Coast hockey is, is uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty good. Yeah, the Islanders <laughs> got a, they got a good young team. Here, yep. So. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to the NBA. And just before we went on the air, there was largest comeback in playoff history last night. Clippers beating the, the uh, Golden State Warriors of all teams, right? And don't they all of a sudden seem a little vulnerable, right? Which, you know, when it's, we started the year, we said, you know, they should walk to the title. No, I, I'm I still tell. holding firm that they'll, they'll I'm not win dismissing their third in it, a row. but but you know, they're not gonna they're not gonna march through the playoffs, it looks like. But I thought I thought I was seeing things this morning, having my cup of coffee when I when I saw that. I saw, oh, okay, the Clippers beat Golden State and then I sat down watching Sports Center, I'm like Excuse me? What? <laughs> they were down 31 points, and ba-boom, they come back. I, I, I didn't even stay with it, because when, when I turned it on, the Warriors were up by like 18 points <laughs> or something. I go, okay, well, yeah. that's done. Listen, it, it may ignite them, and, uh, but you know, I got to think there's some yelling and screaming going on in, in the Warrior locker room, especially yeah. with the probably imminent departure of Durant. So... That's a valid point that, listen, there can be some internal fighting going on, but they're going to have to man up and uh, flush that game down the toilet and then let's see how they respond. My, my gut is that they're going to you know, come out like gangbusters on the next game. Well, listen, that's, that's Doc Rivers in, in L.A. kind sure. of thing. I mean, he's, he's a great coach, yeah. great coach. But yeah, I, there was a, they had a, a piece on 60 Minutes on Sunday with the Warriors. And I told you, when, when Kevin Durant came into this league, he was he was kind, polite, articulate. He's an angry man right now. <laughs> he, he, he came across angry on 60 Minutes, and he's been angry ever since. And you're right, it, imminent departure? You know, 
He's going. That's a valid somewhere. point. I still think he's a, a class act, but I think he's getting tired of it. I don't think he just likes dealing with the media uh, the way it is, and especially on the 60 Minutes. He's about winning, and they're doing a piece. And I But get, it's a I dramatic get, change from when he came into this league. To your point, he didn't come, come across well. No. He, he looks like he's. Uh, nope. he, he really didn't want to be there. So right. we'll see how that plays out. And... Um, like we, we suspected, you know, Commissioner James fired fired his coach. And Magic Johnson, you know, <laughs> apparently not even he had the muscle to override what LeBron James has in, has in, in mind for the Lakers. Yeah, so. I mean, we've talked about it. LeBron is running the show. I, my guess is that he'll probably have Tyron Lou come back um, from... Cleveland, a hand-picked guy. Right, because he's the only guy that doesn't, you know, even stand up to James or something? Apparently. Okay. Uh, so, you factor that in. We, we talked guess. last week. I'm now convinced Anthony Davis will go to the Lakers because of the same agent thing. I am, too. Um, I am, and I, too. And, I, you know, we'll see what happens in Golden State. But Clay Thompson, we talked. I wouldn't be surprised if he, uh, you know, goes down the highway in yeah. L.A. And that big three. We'll see what happens. But, again, LeBron now is 34, 35. He's got a lot of miles on him. Um, we'll see what happens there. But you're well, right. He uh, He's running the show there. Well, so There's no question about no it. No question is right. He had it in for Luke Walton from day one. Yeah. So, I mean, hey, but Luke uh, already got a job. He's, he yep. just, he's just signed with Sacramento. That's probably a good fit for him. Out of the limelight, they seem. Vladdy Divac, we talked about, who made the Hall of Fame. I, I really am kind of stunned that this guy is a GM and he's, yeah. he's got all the, you know, the keys to the Sacramento Kings. But we'll see how that plays out. Yeah. And now I just saw Zion officially declared yesterday. You know what I was actually holding out hope for? I, I, I was hoping he would come out and say, we got unfinished business here and I'm, I'm sticking around for one more year. I really thought that that was a, a possibility. And obviously, you know, the money is just too great. You know, so they're all, you know, Reddish is coming out and Barrett's Claire, coming out. Barrett, uh, Virginia, the national champs. Uh, Hunter declared. Uh, Guy Jerome. and I think Guy and Jerome. Guy both and declared, Jerome both right? declared, yes. Yeah, so um, there was a lot of guys from, from the NCAA tournament that are coming out early, right? right. Kid from Edwards from Purdue, he's coming yeah. out. The kid, kid from Auburn, yeah, he's John coming Morant out. John Morant kid from Murray State's already coming out. So. Well, that we knew, right? Yeah, yeah. And Marquette was a formidable team. Both the twins transferred. I saw that. I don't know where they're going, but, but they transferred. But their stud score is coming back. Yeah. Look that, Marcus... Uh, <sighs> Forget his name, Mark yeah. is something. Good player. Yeah. Um, but then the other thing, of course, with the ping pong ball uh, coming down, you know, it was in the news that the Knicks re reached out to Patrick Ewing. So let, let's say that maybe a conspiracy theory is, is in the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I've told you this all <laughs> yeah, along. They, 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 they need this to happen in New York. I think the NBA needs it to happen, too. So... And if Kevin Durant's going to come to New York, he's got to have something more than what they got there now. And Zion Williamson would fit that bill. We think so. And it's great for the league. So I, I can't... We'll be stunned if the Knicks don't get the number one pick. I'll be shocked, and I will humbly apologize to our audience. As if I'm will wrong. I, because now I'm buying the conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been in the works forever, just like you said. Yep. Good stuff. Right. And um, yeah, listen. One of the I guess before we go off of the NBA, I guess I don't think they're going to win the series, and it was a big shocker in Game One, the Nets and so forth. Yeah, let's talk about the Nets Sixers. Um, I think the the Sixers seem to be in a little bit in trouble, and the Nets are hot and so forth. But what happened in Game Two last night? They got blown out, and I think that's. That's what's going to happen. I mean, I think they gave it a good run, shocker in the game one. But in game two, they got blown out. Yeah, let's say, listen, the Net, Nets had a nice season. They're trending up. They got some good young talent there. They made the playoffs. You got to, you know, take Consider the season a success. Right. Yeah, listen, can they pull this off? Obviously, crazier things have happened. 
I think it was a wake-up call game one for Philadelphia. They woke up. I can't it. stand this Joel Embiid, though. He is a piece of garbage. Uh, I'm not a fan of him. Um, I don't really like the, the 76ers chemistry, to be honest with you. Um, they got some good players. Simmons is good. Simmons, I kind of like Simmons. Um, they, they got Tobias Harris, who was a great acquisition uh, earlier in the year. Butler, but he hasn't been a factor. Right, really. but, but you know, yeah, it was a shout out to the Nets. They've had a good season. Let's see if they can, you know, win another game or two, and then um, yeah, you know, they'll be okay going forward. Agreed. Yep. All right, that's that's good on the NBA. So um, let's move to the NFL. Because there was some big news, and we were just talking about it before Steve and I went on the air. The money that Russell Wilson just got. And it seems to me, there, there were some funny things about this. A, he puts this deadline on, even though he's under contract. And Seattle bows down. And there was a lot of talk, and I don't know where. I, I saw more than one sports writer say, he's going to the New York Giants. And I was like... What? I heard. This. Where do you even possibly think that that was even a remote possibility? Not not just because Eli's there, but because of the money, and they got to draft a quarterback, so they got to pay the the rookie money. How did that even come about? I mean, listen. I mean, he put the deadline out there. Historically, Seattle does not cave to contract demands. Number one, this guy John Schneider, their GM, right? So, the deadline is there. Obviously, all teams need to do their due diligence. Let's just hypothetically say that the deadline passed and Russell Wilson did not get signed. There's all this nonsense. He's married to the singer Sierra. Sierra wants to move to New York and for a career, all this. Russell, listen, that, that was out there. So, hypothetically, if he did not sign that deal, then... But he's not even a free agent. Right, but the point is, he he would have been, his contract was going to be up, obviously, in about a year. So then he becomes available, so to speak. So I was seeing this as, huh, okay, I can see that the Giants may make a play for him, depending if he didn't sign, but it's all mute now. He uh, He's going to be in Seattle for four years, for $35 million. He's now the highest paid QB on the planet. I think he eclipsed uh, Rodgers by about three, four million. Rodgers, I think, is getting 32, 33. We talked like sixty-five million dollars guaranteed. Yep. I mean, if he was going to hold out, and then they wanted to deal him before he hits free agency, I could have seen him going to Miami for a year because they don't know, you know, they don't know what they're doing down in Miami anyway, and that would have been a good fit. But I never, for a second, that I think it was a remote possibility of him going to the New York Times. I'm a Russell fan. Me he's too. Class act. Me too. Listen, he's brought him a title. And you and I have been watching him since his the, days at Wisconsin, where he was right, he was right up there. We watched him as a freshman at Wisconsin up till he transferred to North Carolina State. So I'm a fan of him. That's the market. He played. You know, he played hardball, put a deadline on, and Seattle paid him. So, you know, I don't know what else to say. That, I'm a big fan of his. Don't get me wrong. This is not a knock on, on Russell Wilson. But I just think this is going to open the Pandora's box for guys like Cam Newton. They're going to hold out and say, pay me. Or... I will tell you right now, he's not getting more than Russell Wilson. Ah. I could tell you that right now. So but we had talked about this. We, we, we said to ourselves right before the show, Okay, now that Wilson signed for thirty-five, Rogers is, is already signed. Uh, Matt Ryan makes thirty mil. Um, who who else is out there that is worthy to eclipse a Russell Wilson? My only guess was maybe Andrew Luck if he stays healthy and has a couple more good years. No question. By Andrew where Luck. right? You know he'll be in the mix for a thirty-five million. Drew Brees is unfortunately is too old at this point. Brady has always been good about working his contracts. He's got more money than he knows what to do with. So really, I've just thrown that out at our audience. If you want to send us an email with your thoughts. And again, you know, Mayfield and all these young kids, they, they're still playing on their rookie deals. Yep. I'm a Cowboy fan. Dak obviously is not in the conversation for that kind of money. But Dak is going to, when he gets extended, was probably going to be around $20 million a year. 
something along those lines. Yeah, I, I mean, you're right. You, you, you absolutely hit it on the head. But I think Newton's going to play the same Russell Wilson thing. <laughs> and whether he gets it or doesn't get it is one thing. I'm telling you right now, no way. But luck deserves it. I think he is great. I think he is a professional <laughs> NFL quarterback, and as long as he stays healthy, yep. he'll he's definitely worthy of, of something more. He's a franchise quarterback, right? And they saw it when he was hurt. And right? the only other you know, only other guy I could see coming, and it's not going to be this year or, or maybe next, but Jared you know, Goff. Jared Goff. Right. That's exactly where I'm going. If right. he if he maintains what he's done the past two seasons, yeah. He's going to get that kind He'll of He'll be money. there. Yeah. So, it really, there's only a couple worthy candidates. But <laughs> hey, yep. that's the way, that's the money in the NFL now, right? You can yep. pay them what you want to pay them, but you pay that money up front, and you can cut them after that anytime you really want. So. I agree. So, listen, um, we'll stay on the um, NFL for just a second because the draft is coming up. So, We'll do our draft preview show before. I think the draft is next week. Right, it's I'm not sure up. what what first day is. Usually it's Thursday it's night. Probably a week from Thursday. So. Yeah, it's usually Thursday night, yeah. and they string it out over three or four days now. Yeah. But the first round, we'll do our our little first round mock draft okay. if you want. And, sure. Um, but that's coming up, and I think. <laughs> It's still interesting. There's there's a there's a lot of stuff that could happen between now and then. But um, that's why I think we need to just not even comment on it now. Okay. Because you know the teams are getting ready to, to whoever wants to jump up. You know they're getting their ducks in a row and they're putting their packages together. And they're finalizing and their draft boards yep. Yep. and things like that. But we'll have a draft preview show. There's yep. no question about that. We'll do that next week. We'll actually focus on that because okay. that's always awesome. And before we jump off the NFL. Steve and I always acknowledge a, a formidable passing in, in the National Football League, and this was Forrest Gregg. Yeah, right? that's a good one. Uh, oh, it's not a good one, but it's he, he was a good man with a Hall of Fame career. Worth recognizing, I certainly. Think, I even think Vince Lombardi uh, said he was probably the best player he ever coached um, in Green Bay. He was a warrior. Um, he also then went on to coach Cincinnati. In a Super Bowl. Yeah, he took the Bengals in the 81 Super Bowl. I'm they lost sure to the Niners. I'm not sure if he was the only player to play in a Super Bowl and coach, head coach in a Super Bowl. Am I, am I wrong there, or is that... Uh, not sure. I want to say we that. I, we'll, we'll look it up. If you guys want to ding me on that, go ahead. But um, he was... He was an awesome football player, good guy, class guy too, all around, and well yeah. liked by his peers, and uh, and to be well liked and acknowledged as one of the best players of, <laughs> ever by Vince Lombardi is says a lot. Could there be higher praise? So he passed at eighty five last week and uh, lived a great life. Yep. And, uh, so we wanted to acknowledge uh, Forrest Gregg. Yep. Awesome. So baseball, let's move the baseball. All right. It's kind of a been a well, it's almost a surprising season, meaning some of the some of the teams you thought were going to be good, were starting off very slow. Obviously, it's very early, and some of the teams that you didn't see coming, Seattle, right? You know, they got off to a good start, although they got spanked in Houston. You know, but that's no that's no shame. No, Houston's <laughs> a really good team. The Yankees already played them, but let's talk about the New York Mets. The New York Mets are one of the Early surprises, meaning again, it's still there were only sixteen games into the season. Yeah. But the Mets are ten and six. And I think that division is evenly matched going forward. Yeah, like the I don't Braves, see, Phillies, Mets, I think that's gonna be uh I don't see I don't see that division as being anything but wide open. I don't I don't I wasn't really impressed with, with Philadelphia and so forth. But Atlanta has a lot of young talent. They got the best. Well, they did have the best farm system up until very recently. We talked San Diego. I think is now uh, has the most in the in the bread basket. Yeah. But uh, let's talk about the Mets. Their pitching has been good, and their young players. This kid Pete Alonso is is looking really good. Yeah. So far, so good on that front. I this guess. kid Rosario at short. I think he's a he's going to be a really good 
ball player. And they're, they're ten and six with with Degrom having a couple of rough outings too. But you know he's he's a stud. Of course, I'm not dismissing oh, him yeah. at all. But he's the least of their problems. You oh. know, if he has the kind of year he had last year, then yeah, the Mets the, the Mets could actually win that division because yeah. I think it's that weak. I do too, and I'm not talking like this is <laughs> you know. Uh, not but a prediction here. One no. of the most formidable divisions we've ever seen. There Not at all. A lot of young teams. I mean, Philly, yep. obviously with the Harper acquisition. But again, it's 16 games in, but we wanted to acknowledge that the Mets are off to a good start. They're off to a much better start than their cross-town uh, rivals, the New York Yankees, who now are hosting Boston the, the, the Boston Red series. Sox this evening for the first of many games throughout the season. So. Yep. And then, you know, let's talk about the Yankees. They, they've just been getting killed with injuries. And the latest, of course, is to anybody's, nobody's surprise, is Greg Bird is now back on the DL with the foot problem. And I'm torn about this kid. He had a lot of promise coming up. Um, he just can't stay off the DL. And I really think... And he can't hit when he's not on the and DL. And he struggles when he hits. So I really think the audition for Greg Bird is, is really going to come to an end awfully soon. It, listen, it might be a couple-week thing. I don't know. But they just called up this kid, Mike Ford, who's been in the system. And Voight, obviously, is probably going to get a, a chunk of the time at first base. And I've been liking Luke Voight. This kid has been driving in runs. He's now, it doesn't really hit for average right now, no. but he's the one guy bringing in the runs for the Yankees. Yeah, they are struggling. But they've time. been getting there. Were, a lot of guys are on the DL, man. Every you know, the Sanchez, of course, is back on. Um, again, when you 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 the Yankee lineup has Mike Toutman, um, you know, <laughs> what else can you say? Batances is still hurt. Um, and on and on. So, listen, it's still early. Zach Nowitzki. Britton's gotten roughed up. Right. Yeah, Nowitzki, that's no surprise. But, um, yeah, you're right. They're they're hurt, but, you know, they're still supposed to be the runaway favorites to to win this, and they got to bounce back. And then, uh, what a shame about it is, is as Boston is struggling as well, I mean, it would be nice if they got off to a good start and got, you know, four or five game lead. But that's not, not the case right now, yep. you know. So they play tonight. Chris Sale goes up against uh, Paxton. And we'll see what happens. Sale, is, I think, is 0-3. Yeah, they've both been struggling. They both yeah. uh, haven't been uh, looking real well. But let's say a shout-out to uh, Carson Charles uh, Sabathia for his start on uh, Saturday. So it was his first start of the year. Looked great. I think I, he threw f five or six scoreless. Uh, but he... I don't know what to tell you. Like I've always been, you know, I've always been a fan. Of I'm his, a fan and, too. You know, we've, we've talked about it, and but it was nice to say that he, he came out of the gate with a nice strong outing. Yep. And, uh, he can only help the Yankees uh, all year. Spot starting this, that, be a fifth, sixth starter, that type of thing. And, and he's not going to go more than six innings on on any given start no. or something unless. But yeah, that was that was kind of a bright spot, you know when. He kind of picked up, and then Tanaka got roughed up in, in his last start. But he's a he's a solid pitcher anyway, so yeah. I don't I don't dismiss him. But I, I re on the Yankees, I like this DJ LeMahieu. Oh, what a great pickup! I think so too. I think he won a batting title in the National League. He's won a batting title. He's won Gold Gloves. He he looks like a ball player. He looks like a uh, just a it looks like a ball player. How did we scoop him up? Who you know? He I became mean, available. And uh, and Cashman pounced on him. I was going to bring him up before and say without without him, I without mean, him right now, we could be right. we could be four and twelve. You're or right. Something, you know? You're right. So uh, I'm happy he's on the team. But they'll get healthy. The weather will turn. And yep. And you know the object is to win your series. You know, win two out of three for the most part, and pile up your victories. And and then you know Cashman will will, will make the necessary moves down the road. But the bullpen. You know, the strength of the team, you know, no Batances, and uh, Britain's been struggling, and... Octavio kind of came back to earth. He pitched some good games. Ottavino guy? Uh, oh, Ottavino. Yeah, yeah, he looks good, though. I, 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 yeah. feel, I feel good about him. But this Paxton really has to, you know, he's got to be the ace of the staff. That's what we're paying him for. Yep. A little concerned about J.A. Hat. Uh, he's a good major league pitcher. We got we you know resigned him, but you know the guy's thirty seven, thirty eight. So 
Um, yeah. He's got to step up. Tanaka's been Tanaka. I'm always a big fan of uh, him. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward. But we yep. wanted to talk about that. And you know, listen. When what we what we certainly learned from watching the Yankee series against Houston and and uh, Houston beating up on Seattle. Yeah. This guy Altuve is mighty mouse. Yes. I mean, whoa. Yeah, he's, he's a bona fide. Uh, he is a major league superstar. No big doubt. time. Big fan of him. And God, this guy, that little guy, can. he's like Jimmy Wynn hitting home runs, right? <laughs> the toy cannon. Jim Wynn for our older fans. Wow. What, then, what a ball player. Yeah. What a ball player. And then one of our favorite ball players, of course, Chris Davis' streak came to an end finally. Thank God. Hey. 0 for 53. <coughs> um, I don't know. Let's just move on. The streak came to an end. The Orioles owe him a lot of money. Okay. And uh, I don't foresee him batting more than 210, I'll give him. That type of thing, but listen. He can only hope for 210. I know, but that's the <laughs> Orioles' problem, and we'll yep. see what happens. So. And then our boy Christian Yelich, I want to say again, who we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Three dingers yesterday, right? Seven RBIs, too. I think that was a franchise record. He's on a tear. Watch out <laughs> for him. He's a bona fide all-star coming up. Yeah, uh, he made his name last year, obviously, but he is really shown to be one of the top five players in the game right yep. now. Yep, you know? so let's watch out for him. Uh, con you know, congrats to him. And what was that I want to say? So Clayton Kershaw came back. He made his debut yep. this this week and had a great outing. Went seven innings. I think and, only gave up two. And you and I talked about it. Like when when I, when I saw in spring training that he was on the DL, and you know I knew that it seemed like there was this could be a problem for the Dodgers. You know because the way he throws for as long as he's thrown. Mm. But one thing he, I I saw this morning, he threw uh, like thirty. 8% or 32% fastballs, which is the lowest in his career in one game. Okay. So that means, you know, he can't he can't wing it all night long. So he's going to have to... He'll adjust. He, like good pitchers if, adjust. If he does adjust and becomes a, you know, uh, like Greg Maddox or that, that type and can just paint the corners. C.C. is another example who, you know, yep. Through 98 all the time, and CC's lucky if he hits 90 on the gun yep. now. So, and I, I got confidence that, that if that's what it has to be, because he can't throw a fastball all night long like right. he used to. Yeah. Very good observation, Steve. Very good. So, listen, um, we covered a lot of stuff, and you know, our next show, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna dive into the draft and so forth, and we'll we'll do some updates and so forth on the NBA and. Um, NHL playoffs. So we do our shout outs here and this is my shout out this week is going to and I met this gentleman yesterday and just a, a, a great guy and um, John Malangone and I don't expect our younger fans I wasn't really even aware of him until I sat down with him and talked to him. He was a prospect in the Yankees organization back in the 50s. And he was going to be the successor to Yogi Berra. Casey Stengel loved him. He's a New York guy and so forth. I met him and his buddy Ron Weiss. And I wanted to shout out to those guys because I'm going to certainly follow up with them. Because, you know, they, they sent me a copy of a, an article that was written on John in Sports Illustrated about 20 years ago, and there's actually a, a sports film, kind of a short, called The Long Road Home, okay. and Steve and I looked at the trailer before we, you know, came on the air and so forth, and it's it's just a great story. It's a, it's a heartbreaking story, but this guy was... Um, like I said, a top prospect, you know, went off to war. He was a boxer and so forth as well. Um, Great human interest story, sports story. So we to totally recommend looking up John. Yeah, and there's a website there. It's called longroadhomefilm.com, and you can check out the trailer. Okay. It's been shown up at Cooperstown and so forth. And like I said, a lot of, I think Phil Mushnick had a, is part of, you know, something in the production and, I saw a, a, um, a review from Jeffrey Lyons, who you know from New York, is, is quite a renowned movie critic, right. and so forth. So, 
great guys, both of them. I'm going to meet them again and, and get some more information. But that's a it's it's really some, it's a really a great story, and I think you can even pull up the Sports Illustrated issue if you go to that the website, longroadhomefilm.com. Great. Okay. Okay. Those are my uh, shout outs. I got one shout out to my coworker Frank Leone. Frank uh, is now the proud father of a baby boy, Colton, who was born, I believe, two days ago. So congratulations to Frank and his lovely wife. Congratulations, Frank. And uh, we couldn't be happier for you, so I wanted to shout out on behalf of the show and just say congratulations. And, uh, Excellent. Yeah. And we've been getting some, you know, a couple emails and so forth. And um, if you're interested in, in getting that article on Sports Illustrated, I, I, I have it. You can send us an email at sportswithmono and mono at gmail dot com, and right. I'll I'll make sure you guys get it. And we're still working on the social media aspect, so that this is like a perfect thing by where once we're up and running, we can show, we can just throw that link up there for you guys and go to our Facebook yep. page and Instagram things like that. Yep. We'll get that rolling. And I love I, I look forward to even bringing up you know after I sit down with these guys you know with John and Ron, <laughs> they're ball players oh, and, you sure. know and. This guy was a Yankee prospect. There's a great picture of him with Mickey Cochran and Bill Dickey. Awesome. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. So, anyway, um, just a quick shout-out to our sponsors, right? Of course, um, our loyal loyal sponsors was Lynch Toyota from Manchester, Connecticut, Harley-Davidson of Utica, and DeFilippi's Bakery from Monticello, Monticello, New York. Right, and... Our latest and, and newest sponsor, Coriano Trucking Incorporated. Thank you guys for your support and so forth. And thank you guys for listening. And you got some questions, you want to call us out on something, feel free to do it. Absolutely. All right. And uh, we'll, we'll touch base with you on our, our draft preview show next week and update you on all the uh, other comings and goings. You got it. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. And, uh, have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.